Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we're here to give an update on, yes, a March nor'easter. Not that we haven't missed it a little bit. We didn't have one to speak of last year, but uh, we're going to make up for some lost time with uh, what is going to be an epic event. I want to acknowledge the extraordinary team that has more experience than they probably want to have, but uh, they're the ones who've been to this uh, with me so many times, literally in the, the foxhole or in the headquarters, the emergency personnel offices, the operations centers, and sometimes on the side of a road talking about our next steps. So I want to thank Commissioner Jackie Bray. You'll be hearing from her shortly, the Commissioner of Homeland Security and Emergency Services, Commissioner Marie Therese Dominguez, our Department of Transportation Commissioner, Superintendent Steve Nigrelli from the State Police, Executive Director of the Thruway Authority, Frank Hoare, and our locally owned uh, elected officials who've been through this a lot before and our great partners, County Executive Dan McCoy and Mayor Kathy Sheehan. So let's give you an update. Uh, we are looking at what I would call another episode of March Madness. And because of the timing, everybody were saying, stay home, work on your brackets, and make sure that you're supporting our New York State teams that have made the finals. So, uh, so let's make sure that we are home safe. That's the number one message. There's no reason in the world to have plans to be out tomorrow. Today is the day you get ready. Do everything you need to do. Stock up on the groceries, stock up on the batteries, stock up on making sure you got enough uh, chargers, everything you're gonna need additional light sources because uh, it's going to be one where we're going to see serious loss of power where that is uh, that is a statement of fact there will be loss of power uh, but I also want to talk about uh, how we're planning for this we've been through this before you know we just came through an extraordinary winter in Buffalo seven feet of snow in November before Thanksgiving Christmas holiday where we were all holed up in a hotel it was in my Christmas dinner partners uh, as we are dealing with the uh, blizzard, the blizzard of the century. So uh, we're no strangers to snow here, but we also want to make sure that that does not mean complacency sits in. That is our biggest fear. People in upstate say, well, snow is coming, another snowstorm. I've lived my whole life with snowstorms, but this is one we're cautioning people that this could be deadly. And that is the message that we're here to deliver today. So the key to handling this early preparation, early warnings. I've just gave the warning. Let me repeat it. This will be a dangerous storm. Please stay off the roads for your own safety. Stay in your homes. Also for the safety of these incredible men and women throughout upstate New York who will be giving up their time working round the clock to make sure that the roads are plowed. It is very, very hard to plow the roads when there are people in front of you or cars that insisted on venturing out and end up in a ditch and have to be rescued. This really affects our ability to respond in real time, and you'll hear more about that. So it's also about uh, pre-positioning resources. You'll hear about how we have already launched and pre-positioned 100 National Guard in this region ready to step in. We are bringing in staff. Well, we are utility crews from all over, even from Canada, are now positioned in this region to be able to uh, get the power back on. And I have been through enough power outages myself to know, especially as a young mom, what it's like when you're in your house and you've got kids, they're not in school, you have no power, it is cold, and it is scary. So we are going to be working very hard to position trucks, utility teams here and now so they can respond as soon as possible. But that all being said, when the roads are too busy even for our utility trucks to be on, you have to know it's going to take some time to get the power restored. I just want people to know that. So they'll work as fast as they can. And if we don't think it's fast enough, I assure you we let them know. I have, been, I have no hesitation calling any company head and saying that's not fast enough. Get the people out there now. But it's all about pre-positioning. We feel comfortable with that right now. I also want to make sure that people know that we are going to be declaring a state of emergency beginning at 8 p.m. tonight. This is how we can amplify the message that this is serious but also allows us to deploy resources and do extraordinary, take extraordinary measures to protect uh, the safety of our residents and their property. So I'll have the commissioners explain this as well. So here's what's happening. Light snowfall expected late this morning. I guess we're already past the morning. Uh, early afternoon, pick up later tonight. So about eight, eight inches west of New York Finger Lakes, which is manageable, but uh, then the intensifies, so one to two inches an hour. Three inches an hour, which is a lot, three inches an hour is a lot of snow coming down. 
uh, Monday night through Tuesday afternoon. New York City, Long Island, a couple of inches of snow, and also we're watching coastal flooding on Long Island. This is something we're keeping an eye on and making sure we have individuals in place. What complicates things? Not just the snow coming down and the rate of snow. When you add in the mix of a high wind event, we can get upwards of 45, even higher miles an hour. And that's when you get the lack of visibility and the inability for us to uh, drive safely on the roads with the plows. So we're gonna be asking people again, stay home so our plows can do what they have to do with very limited visibility. So the snow is also gonna be very heavy. I'm kind of a professional on snow. I like good heavy snow for packing. It's great for having a snowball war and for building snowmen. Those are activities I recommend in your backyard only. Don't leave your house. Let's have a snowman building, a snowwoman building contest. Uh, and keep, make sure that you're home safely with your kids doing that because heavy, dense snow means one thing. It's going to take down the wires. There's no way around it. When you have snow that's 50% heavier than normal, this is not the light, fluffy, pretty Christmas snow. This is going to come down like a brick. And it is that weight that causes the problem. So one and a half feet of snow is going to have the effect of three feet of snow. So that is something we're watching out for. And again, that's why we're saying that is not a prediction that there will be some widespread power outages. There will be widespread power outages in a very large geographic area. So we want to make sure that people are aware of that. Uh, staying at home tomorrow, because the, the commutes will be very negatively impacted Monday evening, Tuesday, Wednesday morning. And I've ordered all state employees in the capital regions who have the ability to work from home in the capital region, Mid-Hudson, to work from home tomorrow. So we're encouraging other employers to follow suit, especially with uh, the ability to zoom into your, your jobs. We're encouraging people to please stay home and off the roads. So again, fewer roads, safer they'll be. Uh, again, the temperatures are gonna drop. They're not gonna be below freezing and for a sustained period. But again, your power's out, it's cold. Doesn't matter if it's 35 or 40, it is still cold in your home. So making sure everybody's ready for that. Another area. We talk about what happens when people are out there shoveling the snow. In a normal snow event, shoveling snow, if you don't take breaks, take your water breaks, slow down, they can be actually a trigger for heart attacks. That is often the number one cause of fatalities during snow events are heart attacks from shoveling snow. Now, that's a normal event. This is an extraordinary event. This is an event where the snow is going to be so much heavier. So please. Just wait. You don't have to do it the second it falls, especially our senior citizens. Young people, pick up a shovel. Go help your senior citizen neighbors. Give them a hand because this could be dangerous to their health if they engage in snow shoveling while it's that heavy and that dangerous. So we have a lot of pre-positioning going on. I'm going to allow the uh, superintendents or the um, commissioners to talk about how many plow trucks and loaders and snowblowers. Uh, the Thruway Authority and DOT salt sheds are fully stocked for the storm. That is good news. All the personnel we have, about 4,300 uh, already available. Utility workers, almost up to 8,000 utility workers already in place. Uh, we brought in 2,000 from the outside area. So we are taking this very seriously. And that is the message, again, bringing the National Guard on duty. And we have people mobilized as we speak. Again, our Emergency Operations Center became activated at 8 a.m. We'll be spending a lot of time there over the next 48 hours. Uh, we'll be prepared. And we'll continue working with our local officials and calling around to all the counties as we always do within a large region to see whatever help they need uh, with the plows or uh, anything, uh, standing up warming shelters and places like that. So again, did you catch the message? No doubt in your minds, this is a serious nor'easter. It is something to be taken extremely seriously and that's what we're doing here in the state of New York and we encourage everyone to heed these warnings. This is your chance today, get what you need to Cancel your plans. I've already canceled a lot of our plans for this weekend, and I know this is heading into St. Patrick's Day festivities. I know it's really unlucky this week to have a snowstorm of this scale hit at this time. It's going to disrupt a lot of plans, but, uh, but it's more important that people be safe and in, uh, be there for the next St. Patrick's Day. So uh, thank you, everybody. And with that, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Jackie Bray. Thank you, Governor. Uh, appreciate your leadership getting us all here today and taking this storm incredibly seriously. Um, the vast majority of eastern New York is now under a winter storm warning. 
uh, the Finger Lakes and Western New York are under our winter storm watches that we expect that to continue through the duration of the event um, without a, a break. Uh, as the governor said, the conditions for driving will be extremely dangerous. One of the things I want to say uh, is that this is a long duration event. This is not an event that is going to come and go quickly. Uh, we expect the event to start around 8 p.m. tonight in earnest. We expect the worst of the snow uh, to be falling in the overnight Monday to Tuesday, but this is going to linger through Wednesday morning, uh, and we do expect to see some pretty significant wet winds even throughout the day on Wednesday. So as the governor said, uh, we do expect widespread power outages, and we expect that repairing those outages, getting power back, may take us extra time given the conditions that we're going to face uh, on Tuesday and even Wednesday morning. Um, for us at the Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services, we began uh, our coordination calls uh, with all state agencies yesterday. Uh, we opened our state uh, emergency operations center this morning at 8 a.m. Uh, our field staff have been in contact with county and local leaders and emergency managers to make sure that they have everything that they need. We have opened and put on 24-7 staffing our Hudson Valley, Capital Region, and North Country stockpiles, uh, and we will continue to coordinate any uh, additional staff pre-positioning and deployment when the storm begins in earnest. I also want to take a second to talk about what we expect for the weather after the storm. Today, tomorrow, Wednesday, we expect lows in the 20s, highs in the 30s. That's the storm. Thursday and Friday, we expect uh, the, the weather to be in the 40s and the 50s, including with sun. Uh, so we have begun to evaluate potential for rapid melt melting uh, and minor or moderate flooding risk that we will keep our eyes on and report back to New Yorkers uh, if anything develops. Uh, and with that, I want to introduce uh, uh, Commissioner of Transportation, Marie Therese Dominguez. All right, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Uh, Governor, uh, while I know we're all anxious for spring, it's not quite here yet. So um, with that, uh, following your lead, the New York State Department of Transportation has been preparing for a number of days now for this nor'easter, and, uh, and we're, we're in a state of readiness. This storm is poised to deliver some significant snowfall amounts, and DOT is working in all parts of the state to prepare and respond to whatever comes our way. But let me give you some information on what we're doing here in the capital region in particular. To fight this storm, New York State DOT has 259 pieces of equipment that will be working. Uh, that includes large and medium plow trucks, loaders, blowers, tow plows. Uh, we're putting everything at it. We have 449 supervisors and operators on hand here in the region. Uh, and we've repositioned an additional 26 operators and supervisors from other parts of the state here to the capital region to help fight this storm. We're doubling our resources, meaning our plow trucks, to cover the heavily traveled interstates here in the capital region in particular, including uh, the surrounding ring around the city of Albany, that's I-90, I-87, the North Way, uh, 787 and alternate route 7. Over the course of this storm, we'll look to reevaluate the need for additional resources as conditions warrant, uh, certainly throughout the course of this event. But we're in close coordination and we're collaborating very uh, significantly with our partners at the New York State Police and the New York State Thruway Authority. And jointly, we will be implementing the following commercial vehicle restrictions beginning at 8 p.m. tonight. The full length of I-84 and I-88, the north way, from Albany to Plattsburgh, and I-90 to the Berkshire Spur will have a ban on tandem and empty tractor trailers. The travel advisory will also be issued um, and in place for I-81 from the Pennsylvania line to Syracuse and Route 17 from Middletown to Binghamton. And this will advise trucks to use the right lane only. I'm sure my colleagues, uh, certainly at the throughway, will expand on this a little bit more. To ensure a quick response to potential incidents, DOT is also having tow trucks pre-staged here in portions of the Capital District, as well as on parts of I-84, 
I-684 and Route 17 and Interstate I-81. DOT crews across the state have been preparing our equipment and our roadways and all of our operations will be fully staffed 24-7 throughout the event and for priority cleanups uh, as we look at post-event operations and what needs to happen. We also have our mechanics who will be uh, not only staffing residencies like this one here in Latham, but also all of our fleet facilities 24-7 uh, to make sure that our trucks are up and on the road. But here's my message to all the members of the traveling public, as the governor said, uh, especially in these impacted regions of this state, please stay home. If you have to go out, please give our crews, our DOT men and women, give them space to do their job. Don't crowd the plow. We'll get through this storm, but we need you to stay home, uh, to stay safe, and to let our folks do their job and do what they do best, which is really clear the roads and make them safe for all of you. So thank you very much. And with that, let me turn it over to my colleague uh, at the Thruway Authority, Frank Hoare. Good afternoon. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Governor. The Thruway will have 600 operators and 400 pieces of snow fighting equipment uh, ready to go. Uh, in addition, for the duration of this event uh, from this morning uh, through uh, the duration, we will have our garages and all facilities open and ready to respond. Um, and we have pre-positioned pre and pre-deployed uh, uh, additional assets and resources from Buffalo, which is a surprise. A surprise. Usually we're going that way. But they are in uh, helping us with additional resources. And we have additional uh, uh, resources in reserve and ready to, to respond as necessary. Again, to echo the governor and my colleagues, we're anticipating one to three inches an hour. That means the roads will be hazardous, and we urge you to stay off, stay off those roads. Again, we'd ask you to be mindful of our crews that are out there, our snow plowing crews, our emergency response vehicles, and our partners uh, uh, at State Police and DOT. Please be mindful of them. Let them do their work. On the throughway, as of 8 p.m. tonight, we will be banning tandems and empty trailers. Uh, from exit 17 in Newburgh to exit 36, Syracuse. In addition, on the Berkshire Spur, those bans will take effect from the throughway uh, east to the Massachusetts border. Again, um, and we are uh, requiring all vehicles, uh, all uh, the trucking vehicles to be, and commercial vehicles to be in the, use the right-hand lane. We started messaging uh, yesterday evening that, uh, and we've worked with our partners at the trucking associations to get that message out to, to their, um, their folks. Um, finally, we just say, again, check the Thruway Authority uh, apps, check our social media for the latest and up-to-date reports and advisories. Thank you. County Executive. Oh, my, let me introduce now Albany County Executive Dan McCoy. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. And I, I do want to say, it's kind of easy to smile because the leadership we have with Governor Hogle and her team and being ready for the snowstorm, you can't always predict everything that's going to happen, but knowing that we have this team in place, the partnerships, the communications is vital to fighting a storm like this. So Governor Hogle, to you and your team, thank you. thank you so much for everything that you do. We will also be declaring an emergency tonight at uh, 8 o'clock uh, for the same reasons. The next 36 hours starting at 8 are going to be tough. They're going to be tough, and like everyone has said and said again, please stay off the road if you don't have to be on the road. Uh, I know people don't believe in storms, and if you learned anything from what happened out in Buffalo, you know, if you do happen to decide to go out and you want to be that person thinking you can drive in this weather and you get stuck, make sure you shut your car off, please, please, because what happens is if the snow gets up to your gas pipe, you're not going to make it through the night. So please shut your car off, try to find shelter, stay off the road, let the men and women do their job that they need to do to plow and keep the roads open for not just, you know, emergency situations for the fire department, for ambulance, for the police, so they can respond to calls and emergencies and for, so the national grid can get out and fix the fallen wires because it's going to be heavy snow. Uh, you know, like the governor said, you, you know, please, if you're not out used to shoveling like that, take your time. It is going to be a marathon, but it's not a sprint. Trust me, I'm not used to running. So take your time, rest, as the governor said. Take a five-minute break, ten-minute break. Uh, it's not a rush to get your driveway done or clean off your car because 
please go out tonight, get everything before on your way home from work before the storm hits. Just be ready to hunker down for the next 36 hours and you'll be helping everyone else out. So we, you know, the people that have to get to the nursing homes or essential employees that have to get even to the sewer districts and everything and our DPW people can get out there so they can get there safely uh, to make sure they open it up and it's gonna take time. So even after the storm hits, we still gotta remove all that snow. So we gotta be patient. Uh, it is March, I think everyone's done. Uh, we don't expect this, but you know what? We're ready, we got a great team in place with everyone around here. And I do wanna just echo again and say to the governor, thank you. Uh, I do wanna say thank you to my men and women at DPW or Commissioner Lisa Raimondo, uh, because we're ready too. You know, we got over 700 miles of roads in the hill towns we'll be doing, putting salt out, all of our pieces of equipment will be out. Uh, again, doing their job to keep us safe. But uh, when you talk about great partners, Mayor Sheen in the city of Albany, I get to introduce you, and I just want to say, Mayor, it is good to work with you, and we are going to hold you fast to the NCAAs that you will have everything ready to go by Friday, Mayor. <laughs> We will, we will, because we do work together, and I want to thank the governor. I'm going to uh, follow her lead and uh, say that all of our non-essential workers will be working from home tomorrow. There is no reason for people to be out on the streets. When the snow falls quickly, it can surprise people, and it really can be a, a deadly, deadly venture. So, uh, you know, I also want to echo uh, what the governor said about your neighbors, about seniors, you know, reach out today. Uh, I've already texted the most vulnerable, vulnerable person I know uh, and asked them if they need help uh, and if they need anything to get stocked up on. And so if all of us who are able to do that, do that, we can help get our neighbors through this. And it's really important. Also, as you are going home tonight, be nice to the other people in the grocery store. This is gonna be a really difficult storm, but it's only gonna last for tomorrow. And you know, the roads might still be a little bit dicey on Wednesday, but as you've heard, I've got my marching orders from the county executive. We have to have the streets in Albany cleared in time for the NCAA tournament. Uh, we are also gonna keep all of the roadways clear to our hospitals. Uh, we're gonna be working, we're fully staffed, all of our equipment is ready to go, and we have a dedicated men and women who are gonna do everything in their power to keep everyone safe. So help us, help them, stay home. If you don't have to go out uh, today, before you get home, call that most vulnerable person that you know, ask how you can help them, ask what they need, and we'll get through this. So thank you. Thanks, thank you. Governor. Also, we wanna make sure that people are paying attention to possible road closings. You heard about the commercial ban. One second, please. We we're talking about banks a couple hours ago. I have to shift uh, my mindset. We're talking about snow banks, uh, not New York State banks at this point. But uh, keep an eye out for all the messaging on on travel bans. We, as we announced, I'm going to reiterate: there is a state of emergency beginning at 8 p.m. tonight. Also, you heard about what's going to happen on our major highways. But we'll be watching very closely, and I know my team is planning on middle of the night conversations about what the morning is going to look like in terms of whether or not there'll be local road closures, and that's something we do with our local partners as well. So uh, everybody needs to be tuning into the news, uh, however way you absorb your news content. Any questions from the media, speaking of news? Governor Hazelton. <clears throat> go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so, Governor, I know that uh, counties are asking lawmakers to reject your proposal about the Medicaid cost shift. Um, <clears throat> that will cause cost, uh, they're saying will cost taxpayers a lot more and the counties millions more dollars. Why are, did you make that decision, put that in your budget, uh, especially as counties are still trying to recover uh, financially in the, in the last three years? We've examined the finances of counties throughout the state of New York and they're very healthy. And you can hear this from the controller as well. So they're in a different position than they were in 2015 when the state absorbed the cost of Medicaid increases. State taxpayers are paying for Medicaid increases completely that were once picked up by the counties. For example, this year alone, that equates to $6.9 billion that the state of New York is paying so counties don't have to. And what we're simply saying is that the extra money from the federal government that's there to pay for increases in Medicaid should actually go to the entity that is picking up those costs, and that is the state. So we're not saying we're going to require that counties pick up the cost, I think it's about $37 billion that we have 
absorbed at the state level since 2015 to help the counties that were in more financial distress at the time. But it's just a recognition that the federal government is saying, here's some money for increases. We're the ones paying for the increases, so that's why it's in the budget this year. Any other? And on topics first. Zach, go ahead. Is this what really on topic? Or are you just saying that? Okay. What are some lessons learned from the Buffalo snowstorm, and how are they being put to use here? Well, we were very much activated in advance. I was in Buffalo the day before the storm hit and warned everybody, stay off the roads. Do not, you know, I, I said the same thing here. Buy everything you need. Buy your baby food, your formula, your snacks, your flashlights, your batteries. Do all that in advance. Stay off the roads the next day. That was reinforced. So we're doing that, and we hope that people listen to that. But also deploying the resources. We had deployed thousands of people to put utility, utility crews, snow plows, et cetera. National Guard, we have pre-positioned earlier, so that's something that's important. But also, when you position people in a place, a storm comes and, and really paralyzes them. They can't do their jobs. So that's why in Buffalo, we're forecasting a statewide event. Here, the advantage now is we know the geographic area. We have more predictability. The day before the Buffalo event, it was still expected to be a statewide event. So you don't know where National Guard are going to need to be. Are you putting the plows in the right place? So because of the unreliability of being able to know far enough in advance of where it's going to hit, that, that was more of a challenge at the time. The advantage, as I've said before, is we know exactly where it's going to hit. We know the patterns a day in advance, and that allows us to be more precise and strategic in where we deploy people. Comptroller is criticizing you for walling off $12 billion from oversight and competitive bidding rules. Why are you doing that or why are you proposing that in your budget this year when you uh, signed that Zabrowski bill last year and also isn't no bid contracts, isn't that the problem with the departure of your recent uh, bu budget director? No. Uh, we'd be happy to talk about more in detail on that. but. What I would say is with respect to, I did sign the ability for the controller to have powers that he once had that were removed with the legislature's support, I might add. They, they approved the removal of that oversight. I'm the one who's returning it. So the thought that we're trying to mask oversight from the controller is a false narrative. Okay, any more on topics on the storm that is coming? Go ahead. Hi, Governor. Uh, uh, a few years ago, October of 20, we had a pretty bad you know, wind-related storm here in the capital region, knocked out a lot of power, and it seemed like you know, there wasn't, um, I guess it was a bit of a lag as far as uh, crews coming in. Uh, are you confident that you know, this time around, uh, I know that was under your predecessor, but you know, this time around, are you confident that we're going to see, you know, the maximum amount of crews out there and addressing um, potential outages and what have you? Yes, yes, a thousand times yes, because this is how we use the experience that we all have, and I certainly had dealing with snowstorms from being a local official 30 years ago. So it's all about putting people in place in advance. When you know the geographic area, which is a lot easier, you don't always know that. Now we know it. That's why I was just chatting with crews in from Long Island. They may have some flooding, but they're not going to need snowplow crews in Long Island, nor will they need them in New York City. And we don't expect they're going to need them in western New York. So they're, being, they're here now. They have been called already. So that is the difference in our strategy is, like, be smart about it, not when the snow flies, but before the snow flies. And also bringing down utility crews as far away from Canada because we want to make sure that we have every single person available, every truck available to be able to not just restore the power immediately, but to clear the lines off the roads, which become a dangerous situation. So again, knowing the weight of the snow in advance tells us that there will be serious outages. We cannot guarantee how long it takes to restore power, but we'll know that we have the people on the ground to be able to do that as soon as it's safe to do so. And that's the difference I have to explain. It may take some time but we have the people to do the right job at the right time as soon as it's safe for them to be out there. Okay, time for one more. Marie, go ahead. Governor, could you address some of the pushback from lawmakers around your charter school proposal? Um, and do you, are you still pretty confident that you can get something on that in the budget? You can ask them why they're pushing back. 
I think it makes sense to give parents choice. I don't know that New York has had a stronger proponent of public education than myself in terms of being a product of public schools, believing in them, putting more money toward public schools than any governor in history, increasing across the state over 10% from last year, which was also historic. So, so to the argument that this takes away money from public schools is not true, I'm just responding to parents who want choice, especially in black and brown communities who are saying, can we just have a choice? And it's hard to say no to those individuals who want to be able to have a decision. You know, they may want to go to a public school, they may want to go to charter school, they may want to go to private school. I'm not in a position to tell them that we will take that choice away. And what all I'm trying to do is say that at one time the legislature thought that the number for charter schools in New York State appropriately would be 460. But for some reason, they artificially put a ring around New York City and said they have a different cap than the rest of the state. I believe in one state. No reason to differentiate between upstate and New York City. So I'm simply saying, don't raise the cap, keep it at 460, but remove that cap, as well as allowing for what they call the zombie charters, of which there are about 20, 21 now. And those are schools that were already authorized to be in existence for whatever reason went out of business, but still that community now would like to have a replacement. So why wouldn't you logically be able to replace those that were already approved in the past? So I'm just trying to inject a common sense approach to this, not increase the number, but not say that the number should be decreased just because at some point the schools close. So I'm happy to have the conversation with anybody. I feel I have parents, uh, especially in high need areas where they want a, an option for their children. I, I feel having their voices on our side is important. And that's what I'm fighting for. So um, we'll, have, we'll see how it all plays out in the budget. But uh, that's all going to begin in earnest very shortly. All right, thanks, everyone. Are you on-time budget matters at this point, Governor? On-time budgets are always very nice to have. Last year, our budget was nine days late for one reason. I said I'm not leaving Albany until I get substantial changes to the bail laws to make sure that serious crimes that were left out are now covered and that we have discretion for judges. So, so I think people know it's a nice target. It's a nice, I, I would like an on-time budget. I'm not planning on 